Hey everyone, hope you're all doing well. I didn't wanna make the initial review too long, but just wanted to post up a quick follow-up if you're interested, because I know many of us, myself included, uh, we all had some lingering questions about the new ID cooling cooler. It was a very curious phenomenon that the four heat pipe version was better than the five heat pipe version on the 3700X. And I thought I would be doing the community a huge disservice if I didn't test even further. So I ran a few more tests with the dual chiplet 3900X and the single chiplet 5600X. So welcome back to Machines More. Hope you've all had a chance to check out the review on the SE225 XT. So I'll try and make this a quick follow-up. Let's jump right into the thermal results from the 3900X and the 5600X. I really think the base plate design is key here. If you recall with the 3700X at about a 90 watt draw, the 224XT with the same fans at the same RPM was two and a half, almost three degrees better than the more expensive 225XT. With the dual chiplet 3900X at 4.2 gigahertz and 1.25 volts, which draws well over 105 watts, things look a little bit more like they should. The 225XT pulls ahead of the 224XT by a margin, which would be expected. With the same fans, it's ahead by less than a degree. With the 224XT with a single fan at 1000 RPM, it's well ahead by almost six degrees. But it seems like most of the difference is due to that fan. Just to test a theory on whether it's due to the lower thermal load of the 3700X, I downclocked and also down voltage to 3.9 gigahertz at 1.1 volt which draws close to the 3700X at 1.25 volts. And we're still seeing the same gap, roughly, between the two at the same fan speed. The 225XT is still ahead, less than a degree, but more or less it's the same difference. Now, not that I'd recommend either of these coolers out of the box for the 3900X or the 5900X, because I think you really wanna try and get something with a quiet fan so you can run it at a higher RPM. Now, if you care about noise, these ID cooling fans do get a bit loud past the 1000 RPM mark. And uh, even at 1000 RPM on the 3900X, the 225XT hits about 77 degrees or so with a room temp of 25 degrees. And I would prefer to be in the low 70s for the 3900X. And so the knock to a U12A hits right around 72 degrees at the higher clocks for this chip. Now switching over to the 5600X test system, which I still have set up here, the theory of chiplet placement looks ever more plausible because it's a reversal of fortunes again. I pushed this chip pretty hard to the wall at 4.6 gigahertz and it's a pretty average chip. So it needs about 1.35 volts, drawing about 70 plus watts of power. The noise normalized stock 224XT is about equal to the out of the box 225XT. And with the 225XT's fans, it improved significantly, almost four degrees better. One viewer commented that it's possible that the gap in the 225's heat pipe sits right over the chiplet, and that's definitely possible. Now for both tests, I ended up applying TIM to the heat pipes on the 225 directly, in case there was a variance from that. And I have occasionally found this to be helpful when the paste won't spread well on its own. In fact, I even meticulously filled in the gaps with the paste, but broadly speaking, based on the test results, we're still seeing the same phenomenon as with the 3700X as testing. Now, direct contact heat pipes are tricky, and I think that's why some manufacturers go with a nickel-plated copper base plate like on this Scythe Mugen 5, and that's to eliminate the variability from the specific placement of those direct heat pipes. That being said, if a manufacturer is going to design one of their coolers to work superbly well with a certain chip, then Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 is the right mass market move. I mean, that's the majority of the customers shopping for a $30 to $35 cooler today. Again, I'll reiterate that the 225XT is not a bad cooler. In fact, it's quite a good cooler, especially considering the price. But judging from the thermal results, most of its added performance on the 3900X at least, is coming from the second fan. If you are going Ryzen 9 and you want a budget cooler, then absolutely, the 225XT is workable. Although I really recommend going to a higher end air cooler just to get the most out of it. They are awesome processors. And I think one would be much happier with a Noctua U12A, 
a Dark Rock Pro 4 or a Noctua D15, assuming your case fits it. I mean, we're talking the highest end of a consumer chip today. For Ryzen 5 and 7, my recommendation remains unchanged. I think the results speak for themselves. The 224XT is just a beast of a cooler for the single chiplet Ryzen's, even before price is a consideration. And just to echo one of the comments from the last video, it's one of those Arctic P12 fun packs would be hugely powerful. I mean, you could always get a pack of five, throw two of these excellent P12 fans on the 224XT, and you'd still have three left over to use as case fans and the original ID cooling fan. Now, rather than spending 10 to $15 extra just to double down on a second ID cooling fan. And to ID cooling, you've done an amazing job here. And you've given us so many products at a good value and so much to talk about. And this is squarely in the realm of a good problem to have. The reason the 225 XT doesn't get as strong a recommendation for me is simply because the 224 XT is so darn good already. So I'd appreciate your feedback and would love to hear from you if you've used either cooler. I don't know how much manufacturing variances are at play here, but this particular 224 XT is incredible. And I'd love to test it out with a 5800X if I end up getting one for testing, since that slightly higher TDP with this single chiplet design will be super telling for that base plate theory. So thanks for watching here. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Have a good one and I'll see you soon.